In this video, we'll be sharing a collection of rare, never-before-seen photos from the 1980s that captured a lot more than expected. We've got to give you fair warning, however, these photos are not suitable for all audiences. Prepare to feast your eyes on unedited, risque, and downright mind-blowing photos of stars like Kathy Ireland, Phoebe Cates, Pamela Anderson, and Jamie Lee Curtis. Let's dive right in. Phoebe Cates looking stunning in a bikini, 1982. After appearing in Fast Times at Ridgemont High in 1982, everyone was talking about how drop-dead gorgeous actress Phoebe Cates looked in the film. Not only that, but audiences seemed to be obsessed with one memorable scene in particular. You probably know the one. Even though she was a young actress, she had already appeared nude on camera before. So by the time she was cast in Fast Times, she felt pretty comfortable going in front of the camera without clothes on. Months before the movie hit theaters, Kate's debut film, Paradise, premiered. The adventure romance film was directed by Stuart Gillard in his directorial debut and featured a plot very similar to the controversial 1980 film, The Blue Lagoon. Just as how a very young Brooke Shields had appeared in the nude in The Blue Lagoon, Kate's also got naked for the filming of Paradise. Shockingly, she was only 17 years old when that movie was made. It goes without saying, but that would be unthinkable in Hollywood today. Kathy Ireland Stepping Up to Bat, 1987 In the 80s, Ireland's image was plastered on the walls of millions of teenage boys' bedrooms across America. She started modeling when she was 16 after being scouted by elite model management. She went on to appear on the covers of magazines like Forbes, Cosmo, Vogue, and Mademoiselle. Kathy's famous Sports Illustrated cover from 1989, however, is considered to be one of the greatest swimsuit edition covers of all time. Cameron Diaz as a high school cheerleader Years before Cameron was cast as one of Charlie's Angels in the early 2000s, the fresh-faced future actress was a cheerleader attending Long Beach Polytechnic High School. Fun fact, the school had the honor of hosting hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg. Instead of going to college, Diaz signed a contract with a modeling agency called Elite Model Management when she was 16. She ended up modeling for brands like Levi's, Coca-Cola, and Calvin Klein. But after she appeared in the 1994 Jim Carrey film The Mask, she was transformed into a bona fide film star. She followed that up with a critically acclaimed performance in Charlie Kaufman's 1999 surreal fantasy film Being John Malkovich. Jane Leaves in Leopard Print, 1985 before she was a fixture on TV in the 90s, actress Jane Leaves was a regular on The Benny Hill Show as one of the beautiful Hills Angels. These women were members of Hills comedy and dance troupe and appeared in countless sketches. Leaves did a lot of stage work before landing regular roles on TV. Although she wasn't given many lines on The Benny Hill Show, it was obvious even then she was a gifted actress who was destined for big things. She took to comedy quickly and proved she was a lot more than just a pretty face. Jamie Lee Curtis in Perfect, 1985 In the 80s, Curtis transitioned from being a scream queen into a beauty icon. In the film Perfect, which hit theaters in 1985, Curtis spends most of her time on screen wearing skimpy leotards while appearing in sensual workout scenes. She later regretted appearing in the film, however, as she felt like the seductive exercise sequences, which were borderline pornographic, were too long and drawn out. Heather Locklear in a Grassy Field, 1983 In the 80s, pretty much everywhere you looked, you saw Heather Locklear. This blonde bombshell had a recurring role on T.J. Hooker and a pivotal role on Dynasty, where she got a chance to be as sinister and devious as she desired. She was one of the reigning queens of the decade with her come-hither eyes and poofy hair. And besides appearing in a few of the most-watched TV shows of her time, she briefly got involved in the hair metal scene after marrying Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee. She proved she could rock every bit as hard as the boys and looked absolutely stunning in the process. Carrie Fisher at the Beach, 1983 while filming Return of the Jedi, Carrie Fisher had to wear the now legendary bikini seen in the photo in many of the early scenes that took place at Jabba's palace. When George Lucas first showed her the outfit, she apparently thought he was kidding. Fisher felt nervous about having to wear it as she had to sit very straight and still to avoid having visible indentation lines. No lines or creases were allowed, so all she could do was sit very rigid and straight until it was time for her scenes to be shot. 
As amazing as those finished shots looked, it must have been wildly uncomfortable for her to get them. Sharon Stone on All Fours, 1983 In the early half of the decade, another eventually ubiquitous 80s queen, Sharon Stone, was doing just about everything she could to land her big breakthrough role in the film industry. But the problem was everything she'd been cast in up to that point was a B-film. Everyone simply wanted to cash in on her looks, but she desperately wanted to be seen as a serious actress. Eventually, she decided to use her intelligence as a way of being sexy. Stone is a self-described bookworm. In a if you can't beat them join them kind of move, she came up with a plan where she would be able to use her smarts to her advantage in such a way to score a more significant role. After learning from a friend who was a photo editor for Playboy that Hugh Hefner wanted her to model for his magazine, Stone showed her well-connected pal a series of black and whites that Man Ray had taken of his wife. Sharon said she wanted her shoot to be something like that, and minutes later she landed her role in Basic Instinct. Before we show you more photos of 80s women, be sure to give this video a like, and for more sexy and risque videos like this, tap the join button to become a Facts First member. With your membership, you'll gain access to an exclusive library of provocative content that YouTube typically doesn't allow. Tanya Roberts and the Beastmaster, 1982 there are two things audience members remember best from the Beastmaster. One is the titular master had a magical power to control animals, and the second is Tanya Roberts. Roberts was the queen of B films in the 80s, and she also happened to be every teen boy's dream girl. She was once quoted as saying the only reason she chose to appear in the Beastmaster was because the script didn't call for as much focus on her. Christy Brinkley showing off her beach bod, circa 1980s. Brinkley was one of the most popular and sought-after models of the 80s. She was frequently featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated and introduced the world to the modern ideal of what a supermodel was and could be. That being said, she wasn't just a model. She also created art and came up with some pretty innovative ideas to help other young women. Speaking to the New York Times several years ago, Brinkley talked about how in the 80s she came up with the idea of developing a real model doll collection. She wanted the dolls to be supermodels who jet set around the world, could speak multiple languages, and teach girls a variety of solid life lessons. Pamela Anderson, The Blue Zone Girl, 1989 Pam Am was 22 when she was scouted after being featured on the Jumbotron at a British Columbia Lions football game at the BC Place Stadium in Vancouver while wearing a Labatt Blue Beer cutoff t-shirt. The shot garnered her so much attention that the beer manufacturer hired her immediately as a spokesmodel to promote their brand. Inspired by the event and Anderson's stroke of luck, her boyfriend at the time, Dan Lychik, produced a poster of Anderson's image that was entitled The Blue Zone Girl. Later that year, Anderson appeared on the cover of Playboy's October 1989 issue. The following year, she was chosen as Playmate of the Month for the magazine's February 1990 issue. In 1991, Anderson was cast as the first Tool Girl on Home Improvement, and in 1992, she scored her iconic role on Baywatch. Her work with Playboy, which spanned 22 years, combined with all those early television roles, helped transform Anderson into one of the most famous models of all time. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these ladies is your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.